Hello boys and girls, what's going on? It's Tom. And it's Jamie. Welcome to the Chronicles of Podcast. The Chronicles of Bloodstock 2023. Hey, we're Blood Chapters. I'm Donna, this is Nick. And I'm Nick, the lead guitarist. Donna, the vocalist. So how are we doing, guys? Are we well? Oh, oh amazing. amazing, yeah. yeah. Incredible. We've just come off stage, so it's sky high at the moment. Yeah. 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 I did not expect that first thing in the morning. After party night as well. I thought there'd be yeah. a, a few sore heads, uh, a few people still in bed. I don't think there were. No, they they're weren't. Not, well, there might be sore heads, but there were oh, yeah. still in bed. <laughs> so, yeah. Incredible, yeah. So, That's great. So one thing I love about this festival is it's like you go, we're on what time? In the morning, and then you go, no one's going to turn. And then you see this like fields of people, like. That's, but that's what I love about this festival: is people come for the music, don't they? Absolutely, yeah. We're, we're setting up, and all we could see all our northwest crew that had rocked up, and like, you know, love the support. Yeah. That's, that, that's our fam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we pushed off backstage for a little bit, and then we came back out, and everybody was there. And yeah, wow. Yeah. Well, you do. You like. I loved that when they first opened the stage. It was like 20, 30 people in there, and I thought, well, you know, you work what you've got. Maybe it's a nice day. They don't want to be in a tent. The main stage is opening soon. Work with what we've got. Then yeah, when we came back out during our intro, it was like, oh my god, <laughs> this people, oh, shit, shit. Where did they come from? <laughs> they were like gremlins after midnight. <laughs> yeah. they were just fucking brilliant. <laughs> Um, but other than this, obviously, how's your blood stop been so far? Have you just got here this morning, or...? Well, I've been here since Thursday morning, so... Okay. But obviously, a fairly tempered Thursday. Normally, I get here, park the car, and I'm woohoo! Yeah. But, uh, no, I was, I was well behaved yesterday, especially with it being so hot as well. Yeah. And, uh, I know, the rest of us came this morning. Diva's in the Airbnb, you know. Oh. Living it up. Showers. Oh, <laughs> bit of porcelain, yeah. that's what you know. <laughs> Well, I'm very posh. I'm a VIP, don't you know? So I get a bit of porcelain anyway. So. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, I don't slum it. You know, not entirely, anyway. Absolutely superb. But how? So obviously, I know you've just come off, off your set. How was it? How was it for you guys? It's incredible. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it's so surreal, especially like when you've got all the tech and the crew there. And they just do everything for you, you know, week in, week out, we're used to doing it all ourselves. So yeah. somebody goes, oh, what amp do you want? Like, well, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> what have you got? <laughs> you know, I've got all these different Marshall stacks. Like, yeah, uh, one of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it's so easy. I just easy. let you guys do that. It's yeah. like, I've just got my little wireless unit, it says plug and play. I'm, I'm no fuss, no moss all the time, so I just need a little cable plug and instrument to turn it on. That's it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was saying to the guys before, didn't do that after we played, day. it was like, I was expecting a bit of it sort of imposter syndrome. Because we've been coming here for years and watching bands on those stages. I thought I was going to be up there going, oh, what the hell are we doing up here? But it, they made it so nice and so comfortable and so relaxed that you were just like... Yeah, the crowd the same. Like, it just felt totally natural. It just felt like another gig. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. Um, do you tend to plan your shows differently for a festival compared to one of your own gigs? It's just like, get the bangers out or... Well, we did put a bit of thought into the set list in the first half hour slot, which we're not used to doing anymore. We're used to doing headline sets, so yeah. you're playing for an hour. You could stretch it out, you could put a few more in. But you in particular are very conscious of that early, people maybe don't want all the face melters all the time, so we just put a bit of a mix of the older stuff, the new stuff off the album, put a little bit of groove in the middle. So, yeah, we could a maybe have chucked a few extra bang. If we'd had an extra 10 minutes, we could have chucked an extra couple of face melters on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We quite like to have done that, but like you say, you've got to temper it with what the time yeah. you've got. It's a balancing act because like we got we had a new album came out last month, so it's like we want to make sure there's a good view off that, but not forgetting the old stuff that people that are Bloodyard fans will know. So it's getting that balancing, like I say, the fast ones, the groovy ones, and just try to squeeze in like your musical CV over half an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a bit of a challenge, but I think we know. Because we've been going for like 30 years now. Oh wow! There's, there's, there is a wee bit of music in there, and it's it's getting to that point now where actually. I think the set list is getting trickier, especially yeah. when it's a short one. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> what do you do? And then we're going to use the intro back as well. So, 
that, that knocks off another couple of minutes. And you want to you want to err to the side of caution. You want to be professional, err to the side of caution. You don't want to overrun. So like we can maybe squeeze in an extra song if we've knocked off that and run right to the limits of the yeah. set time. But then that doesn't budget for any issues that you might have. So we we're, we're quite tight with ourselves, aren't we? But yeah, yeah. That's right. Very considerate. I like well, it. I, I like it very much. You've got to be. Like, you got to be. Yeah. Oh, you should be. Yeah. 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 First time on the big stage of Bloodstock, we want to be invited back, so we don't. Yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. Know. <laughs> so us. Us as, a, us as a podcast, we're official ambassadors with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. Awesome. In that case, I, am. I was going to say, I would ask if you knew of Sophie in her story, but that gives that one away. Absolutely. But how did that mean, being supporters of Sophie, to be open in that stage today? It meant a lot, because we've done, we've done stuff ourselves with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. A few years back, we organised an all-day event at a sanctuary bar in Burnley. Mm. Which is quite close to where Sylvia yes. is yeah. from. Where Sylvia Sylvia from. So, and we put it on there, full day of bands, and Sylvia herself came along, and all the money raised, all the entrance fees, all like that, all went straight to the Topi Foundation. So it's, That's amazing. Yeah, it was, it's something that is very close to our hearts, especially being from near that area ourselves. It really resonates with us. I, I mean, we've all been, like, not, obviously not to that extreme, but we've all felt that sort of issues in the past. Less so these days, it is getting better. Yeah. But, but there is still work. You know, we're, we're in our 40s, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. we've, we've been there, we've been through when it wasn't that good. Yeah. So good. And, and things are improving, but there are still those issues. And, and it does need to be highlighted. Yeah. Absolutely. I was going to ask, like, tell them to piss off if you don't want to talk about it, of course, but have you ever been, like, treated differently, whether it be someone shouts something or anything like differently, just because whatever you're wearing or whatever it may be? Absolutely. I, I work in a school, and, and when I originally started working in a school, I was treated differently, not just by the children. You know, you'd have issues with the children because you were weird and different, and they didn't they didn't know it, they couldn't accept it because they didn't know it and understand it, and they weren't brought up with it. But even to a certain degree, the staff when they started, you know, had, you had to take your piercings out and all the rest of it. Tattoos were a no-no. Whereas now, uh, I've got my piercings at work. My head is very supportive. Same head teacher. Um, there was a gentleman that used to work with me and he had tats all the way down to his knuckles and, and that was also fine 10, 20 years ago, absolutely not. Yeah, no. That would have been a massive issue. And, uh, and you see more alternative children and children ask you things now rather than just go, you're weird, I don't like it. Yeah. I know your so, students love that you're in a metal band these days, don't yeah. they? Yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah, they, um, I mean, they're boggled by it, but uh, at the same time they love it. So, <laughs> even the ones that aren't into it at all. Oh. <laughs> I'll leave him. Some PR guy is calling. <laughs> We're interviewing PR man. You should know that. Come on, come on. Yeah, Tom, Tom. Tom. <laughs> Again. But no, having having this foundation here though, supporting people. Because let's be honest, the foundation is for people like us. People Absolutely. are here today. What does that mean to you guys being in this? subculture shall we say this alternative subculture what does it mean having that support and that charity there it's it's amazing it's like we well, you know bloodstock anyway it is a, a huge heavy metal family isn't it yeah, absolutely it, it is a safe base for everybody you can go to bigger festivals that are of a similar genre it's still not the same and, and it's a huge part of that I think yeah, absolutely huge part of that. absolutely really it's a culture yeah but, but you were saying like it's getting better and there are more alternative children now yeah but what do you think if, if you have any ideas at all, what do you think the foundation could do to support those kids that are coming through it now? Is there anything they could possibly do, do you reckon? Or is it... I would say, I know from my point of view, when I was first sort of getting into metal at 12, 13, and you don't know anybody else, you don't know where your metal, local metal family is or where the events are and that kind of thing. So I think if there are events where your alternative crowd could go and you don't feel like you just got to sit in your bedroom on your own listening to your records because nobody else understands you. If there was maybe more sort of, like I said, group activities, but if there were... I mean, I've always been a big advocate of, like, underage gigs. Mm. Get the kids in and see bands yeah. and see... Yeah. Feel yeah, yeah. that live yeah, music yeah. and not only that, but like even we get here, feel that... Company, yeah. it's with parents. With parents, yeah. well, feel, so you can feel part of that community. Yeah. You know, if you can... You know that there are people around. There's people that dress like you, people that like what you like. 
But at the same time, people then to sort of go, oh, you've got to, I'm 15 and I want tattoos, what do you think? And you can go right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's when you get to show him your tramp stamp, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever you do, your first one's going to be rubbish, so don't worry about it. It doesn't need to be your name on your back. But there's, there's so much sort of wandering in blind. Voice of experience. <laughs> not, not me. Uh, not me. But when you're, you're young and you don't know, and it's. If you, if you were new into metal and you walked in here right now, you'd probably think, oh my god, what, yeah. what do I do? Who can I. You know, we all look like scary buggies. We've all got beards, long hair, even the women are dressed up covered in. It's a bit harsh. <laughs> covered in leather and spikes, and you think, oh my god. <laughs> so if there was a way to sort of introduce that to a younger audience, those that need it sort of most, and then from that you build a support group. You know, if everybody's. I also love that you guys go to schools and, and so you, like she came to my school like, twice in my time there, and and has that discussion about everything that happened and addresses the actual key element of it as well, yeah. and, and brings it to a, 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 a the hook moment to those yeah. kids where yeah. they can see actually. The hell was that for? Nothing. Yeah. There was no reasoning behind any of it. Why? Yeah. Why? Why don't you like that person because they've got black clothes on? And just literally just pinpoints that and shows them in their face. What are you thinking? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, from that, you build a support group. It's, yeah. And I think having people to talk to it is the most important part of it. You don't want, you especially young and feeling alone. If yeah. they've got someone they can reach out to and share experiences with and realise that they're not on their own, they've got help, and then it's, it's not going to last forever. Absolutely. A great idea, it really is. But let's bring it back to you guys. Brand new album, Distilled Aggression, out at the end of June. How's it been received? How's it gone down? Amazing. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. yeah. We, I mean, we were so excited about getting it out, weren't we? we yeah. We sort of wrote it over lockdown. Um, you know, you've come up with the rates and we were putting it together from like sort of 2020 when we were quite isolated and everything and it's just we like, were so excited about the music weren't we yeah. so it's to, to get it out there for everybody and then for it to be so well received has been so exciting I'm I'll step out and tell him you, you can't you, yeah, yeah so it, like Donna said so we wrote most of it during the lockdown because we released our previous album Orchard of Corpses and within weeks lockdown hit yeah so that was it any plans of gigging and touring were sort of well, who know put on hold from that point on so it's all we could sit and get sad about that or just crack on so yeah I, I sat and wrote quite a lot of the riffs and put them together when we're all locked down and isolated and as soon as we hit the practice room it was get back out there and it's the energy from that we wanted to bring energy through that album and then hit the live shows with so it's been really well received we've really cracked on with it and I just can't believe how much people like it so yeah, yeah. it's great I mean you did an album release show at uh, Rebellion didn't you in we July did. how did that go um, yeah amazing <laughs> yeah <laughs> Rebellion's one of my favourite venues we played there the year before with Nervosa and Burning Witches and it was like yeah this is where we want to do that show we had Dead 13 who won the Burnley Metal to the Masses yeah. they were supporting us and some other friends of ours called um, Odysseus they came and played with us as well so it was a gem it, it felt like a party to be honest everybody was just having a great time you know we're giving each other all tea at Bloodstocks in a couple of weeks everybody was really <laughs> excited and yeah it was just brilliant excellent phenomenal is there plans for a full tour for the new album or is it not really no we were going to um, just yeah we'll just get this weekend out of the way really yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we got all excited about this one but um, yeah like just gigs generally but um, nothing nothing too major is it no, well, that's, we're still sort of feeling our way out with how venues are doing and getting back on their feet, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just taking what we can at the moment. And we've done it with like an EP before and it was good, but at the same time, off the back of COVID and everything, things haven't recovered fully, so it's just... Yeah. Uh, we've got some offers coming in, so we're grabbing them because we want to get as far and wide as we can, so as long as those offers keep coming in, we'll keep turning up. Absolutely, no doubt they will. An Guys, an yeah. accidental tour. Yeah. That's the end of the tour. Sorted. Accidental. We didn't mean for this to happen, tour. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for taking time oh, out and no, chatting to us. No, it means thank the absolute world. No, it really means a lot. Thank you so much. Enjoy us the weekend, guys. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your weekend. All right, thanks. Cheers. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.